Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Mackay and today I'm going to be talking to you about Cinestill Double X, sometimes known as BWXX. There's a couple of other variations along those, but it's Cinestill's black and white offering. Now, spoiler alert, this is one of my favourite black and white films ever. So I'll be telling you all about why and what the community thinks of it and where it's come from shortly. Whether you are new to film photography or a long-time analogue enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews, to how-to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! So, as always, it's nice to start with a little bit of background about the uh, manufacturer. So, Cinestill are wonderful Americans who come out of the Hollywood legacy. In fact, they are over in California, and their background is in Cinefilm, as you might expect, and their whole vision, their, their passion is about making cinema film and film photography more accessible. So their sort of most iconic product is probably 800T, which is based off a movie film, but adapted. So you need to remove Remjet. You might have heard that film before. We've reviewed this one actually before. We'll post the link underneath so you can see more about it. And then also making it the right size so people can shoot it in their cameras and then develop in C41 normal chemistry. They did the same magic trick with 50D. There is 400D imminently. I'm recording this in summer 22, and hopefully if you're watching this in the future, you'll have shot 400D before and will know why I'm so excited about its launch. But they also have this double X negative. So it's black and white. It doesn't need quite as much faffing with <laughs> chemical changes as color, but it is still movie stock. In fact, it is, I'm gonna get you the actual Kodak number, 5222 or 7222, movie stock. Now, when I say movie stock, I do literally mean that the emulsion used here has been used to shoot Hollywood films going back for the last century. And at the moment, there's a little bit of a resurgence with some of the young directors, but also there are some directors who frankly will only ever shoot on film. Therefore, when you see those directors work in black and white, it is very likely that it will be the same type of emulsion. So I'm thinking the sequence in Kill Bill Volume 1 with Tarantino, who is obviously a massive analog film obsessive, he'll always shoot on that. I know that some of American Horror Story, the TV show, was filmed in black and white on this film stock. Let's see if I can see a few more. Casino Royale, Cinderella Man, Manhattan, I'm Not There, Schindler's List, Raging Bull. The list goes on. The good thing about this is that you know that when you're shooting this then you are shooting a top, top quality film. And there is an element as well of history and artistic aesthetic as well that gives you a sense of, uh, of, of a greater purpose maybe with what you're shooting on any one day. So that's one reason that I like it, is I do enjoy that, um, that connection and the quality. The other reason I really enjoy it is because it is lovely and contrasty. Not too much, it doesn't make everything just blocky. It is just noticeably punchier straight out of the camera, so to speak, straight out of the developing lab than an HP5 or a Kentmere or a Foma. It is, it is punchy, it is really good. I love portraits on it. I love street photography on it. You actually have to be a bit careful with street photography. If it's too bright, if the edges are too much, it might turn out just a little bit too uh, contrasty for you. But generally speaking, with day-to-day -day shooting, it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Now, it is worth noting that um, there are other brands, there are other uh, companies out there who also take this base stock and sprocket it and cut it. So Cine still don't have a, a monopoly on that side of things. But I think what they do really, really well is the reliability, the quality, you know is gonna be absolutely top notch. And their heritage is in cinema film. So again, it, it makes sense for me to be going to the Cine still one, generally speaking, to shoot this film. It responds very well to pushing, to pulling. It is a specialist at, well, I was about to say ISO 200, but of course being cinema film, you get a bit better guidance. So actually, if you're going to shoot it in tungsten without any filter, it would be ISO 200. If you shoot it outside, you shoot it at ISO 250. And that's to do with the different color temperature rendering slightly differently and the fact that sunlight has different light patterns to it than artificial light, etc., etc. So 200 to 250, 
I mean, honestly, you're not really going to notice the difference unless you're doing something that has to be super calibrated. Equally, if you have an old camera with 160 ISO, you could use that as well. This isn't going to mind. It's going to be flexible enough to cope with things really well. It's going to provide these amazingly gorgeous dark photos. I mean, I was really excited. I think it was only last year when they brought it out in 120 and it is amazing in 120 as well. Honestly, one of my favorite stocks. Customer reviews on site, call out. Gorgeous, nice, strong contrast. They talk about the versatility, how easy it is to use in different situations, which again makes sense if, it, if it's coming from that period where people are gonna have to shoot. Again, the other thing with movies, of course, is while you can light them very well, they'll often have more dynamic range across time as well as in one moment than any one point. So again, films need to be able to cope with that reasonably well. One of my favorite reviews said, sharp in the day, charismatic at night, which I, I mean, I'd love to be able to say that about myself, but I don't think I can. So uh, if you can't be sharp yourself, charismatic at night, then at least bring a film that can do. And of course, as I said as well, you can push it. Pushing it will up the contrast a bit. You will get much darker blacks. But again, if you're in the mood for that kind of thing, why not? That's it from me. If you've shot this film before, please do let us know. Drop a link to your Instagram or your Flickr or your personal website. If you've shot it in 120, let me know what you think. Do you like it in both emulsions? Is it favored in 35mm or 120? And if you're shooting this for the first time as a Wonderbox subscriber, honestly, just enjoy. The photos you'll get back are absolutely brilliant shoot portraits. That's my favorite thing with it. Portraits, people, and anything else. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you again soon.